Hi, my name's Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about estate planning and one of the biggest questions we get around estate planning is do you do the will? What other parts of estate planning are there? I'm not sure kind of how everything moves and to me there's two distinct parts to estate planning and we're going to break down both of those in this video. So when most of us think about estate planning, it doesn't matter if you live in Canada, US or anywhere around the world, we think about having a will done or a will in place and that is definitely half of the estate plan. So make sure to have a will put together. And basically what a will does is says, when I pass away, whatever I have left, these are the people or the charities or whatever, but this is where my assets go to. So it's basically, it's a directive on where your assets and liabilities potentially uh, will go to. Now that's again, one part of it. A lawyer or a notary will typically do the will for you. We don't do as a financial planner, we don't do wills. The other half of that is where the financial planner comes in and the tax plan, the estate plan, and what we do on our end, which is really how do we maximize the amount that goes to the people in your will? And a lot of you think, well, Adam, I want to spend down every dollar that I have by the time I die. I don't really care because hopefully that number is zero. But of course, we know the reality is that's not how it works because you probably have a home that you live in that will be passed on or sold and those assets will be passed on. And the likelihood of you spending every single dollar that you save on the exact day that you die is probably next to zero percent. There's going to be something left and that something's going to get passed to someone. And there's three people or three organizations that are going to get your money when you die. CRA in the form of taxes or IRS in the States or whatever country you're in. Uh, it's charities. And the third will be family, friends, people you want to leave money to. Now I always say, and I've said on this channel and I always tell my clients, if you do nothing with estate planning on this side of the coin, which is the tax planning, by default, CRA gets the first kind of chomp at the bit. So if you do nothing, CRA is first in line and then it's going to be your beneficiaries beyond that or a charity. If you do some planning, we can bump CRA from first to last in line. So again, by default, CRA is going to be the first one to get money. How do we get them down to the third? Well, that's done through tax planning. How do we make sure more money goes to charities? You need to do tax planning. So again, a lot of that ties into what we do every day in every plan that we built, which is you know, RSP meltdown. So if we can melt down your RSP and avoid that, get it into maybe a tax or savings account so that that can be passed on tax-free to your beneficiaries, any RRSP or RIF money when you pass away is added to income in year of death. Of course, when you have income in year of death, you have a tax bill. So that's where some of the tax planning comes in. And so so when we talk about estate planning, a lot of that estate planning is naturally worked out through proper retirement and tax planning within your retirement plan. If you have a proper retirement plan that's focused on taxes and reducing out that tax bill, leveling out the tax bill over time and looking at life expectancy and making sure that when you hit that life expectancy, a lot of the assets that you have left are TFSA accounts, non-registered accounts, stuff that's not going to create a big tax bill when you die. That kind of creates a situation where the most money possible is going to be passed on to your charities and the least amount of money, maybe even zero dollars, will be passed to the tax authorities, CRA, IRS, or wherever else. Now, for those of you that have, say, rental properties or vacation properties, and you say, Adam, like, I want to hold on to my rental property till the day I die, or vacation property, or family uses it, when I die, it's going to get passed on. That's kind of part of this tax planning and estate planning. If you have a cottage, I'm going to use this example. So let's say you bought a cottage years ago on the lake in the Muskokas for $100,000. Your kids are now growing up, and you guys are enjoying it, and grandkids are coming in, and it's kind of a generational property that you're enjoying now. Now, but you also want to make sure your kids and grandkids take advantage of this. The reality is, is when you pass away down the road, let's say that property increases over time and it's worth $2 million. When you die, there's a deemed disposition, which means that the tax authority, Sarah, will say, well, we assume that you've sold it, even though you haven't sold it, you've sold it for tax purposes. And so you have a $1.9 million gain. And currently under tax laws in Canada here, 50% of that would be taxable. It'd be a capital gain, so 50% is taxable. Again, that could change here over time. It might go to 75 or 100%. But currently, as I film this video, it's 50%. So again, there's a big taxable income, which creates a big tax bill. How are you paying that tax bill? It's going to be due. You know, do we buy life insurance on you or your spouse or common law partner so that when you pass away, 
There's insurance proceeds to pay that tax bill. Do you have a donation or a trust set up to make a big donation at death to offset that tax bill? Or do you just plan your overall affairs so that, yeah, even though I don't want to pay tax, I'm preparing to pay it so that the family cottage can actually stay in the family and they're not gonna have to liquidate it. When you look at estate planning, obviously the goal is let's pay as little to no tax as possible, but sometimes tax is inevitable. Sometimes, again, if you have a situation like this where you have a family cottage that you wanna pass on, there's going to be a tax bill on death. Now, you could pass it before, pay tax now, there, there's different tools that you, you could use, but the reality is there's going to be a tax bill. How do you manage that tax bill and how do you plan for it? So when we talk about and use the language estate planning, it's planning for your estate, whether that's reducing the tax bill or showing you what that tax bill is going to be and looking at options on how to pay it. We're going to do a future video on this, but for a lot of our clients, if they have that family cottage or maybe a bunch of rental properties that they want to hold on through life and eventually there's going to be a big tax bill when they pass away and pass it on to their next generation, kids, whoever it may be, they want to make sure that those properties stay going. They know there's a big tax bill, so they'll buy life insurance. And you know, this isn't a video to push life insurance, but that would be one means to pay the tax bill on pennies on the dollar essentially. Some of you are doing it right now in a good way and some of you we've come across where you've been sold the wrong product, it's not a great solution, you're paying too much, whatever it is. So we're gonna break that down in a future video. But again, a lot of you watching this have a tax bill at death, whatever it is. Again, cottage, second property, rental property, whatever it is. How are you managing that on death? And a lot of you are a bit naive to this saying, well, I'll just pass it to my kids beforehand and there'll be no tax. That's not the way it works. So you need to understand how it works how much tax are you gonna pay, and you build a plan around that. So again, your will, that half of the estate plan says, when I pass away, my cottage in the Muskoka is gonna to pass to my kids. Now what we do on our side again, is to make sure what is that tax bill projected to be, and do we have assets or insurance or whatever it is in the estate to pay the tax bill so that that cottage can actually flow to your kids and doesn't have to be liquidated to pay the tax bill. So when you take a step back and look at estate planning, a lot of you just think, will. I need a will, I need to make sure that when I die, so-and-so will get the money that they're supposed to get. But the other side of it, you guys are missing out on. You know, you think retirement plan is all about investing and getting the best returns and all that. Well, there's tax planning to it, which is what we talk a lot about, RSP meltdown and ladder strategy and all this, but a byproduct of all of this is your estate plan and how we allocate money to the next generation, to charities and not to CRA. So when you come to that day where you pass away, have you structured your affairs properly so that CRA is not getting a whole bunch of cash? And if you haven't, you might want to look into that. Again, reach out to our office. We do offer fee-for-service planning. Talk to your financial advisor to see how that goes. Some accountants can do a bit of massaging around this, but I will say that typically it's going to be a certified financial planner that can build out a proper retirement and tax plan and incorporate in that estate planning. That's what they're specialized to do. Uh, if you can find a financial planner that has what's called a CLU uh, designation, so if they have three letters behind their name, CLU, that's kind of an advanced estate planning designation. Again, Brett that works with us has that designation. I'm just wrapping mine up right now. I'm writing the exam here in a little bit. So, you know, I have all the education behind it and just getting the letters now as well. You know, if you're looking for like, who do I talk to on this? that would be a good kind of guide on who to talk to and how to move on this going forward. So we'll leave it at that. So again, as we talk about estate planning, there's a will and then there's kind of the tax retirement planning that goes into and is integrated in within your whole financial plan. So talk to your financial advisor about that. See what your estate plan looks at. And again, make sure you don't forget about the other side of the coin, which is your will. Make sure it's up to date and really follows what you want uh, when you pass away. So thank you for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.